One of the biggest mysteries in English history is what happened to the princes in the Tower. The expression relates to the disappearance of Edward V and Richard of Shrewsbury, the Duke of York. The two brothers were the only sons of Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville. When their father died, they were staying inside the Tower of London to await their coronation and prepare for Edward to become the new King of England at the age of 12. Richard was just nine, however before Edward was crowned, the two boys were declared illegitimate and suddenly Richard, their uncle, became Richard III and King of England. What happened to the two boys has remained a mystery for over 500 years and it's mostly assumed that they were murdered by someone in a political ploy for the throne. However, the only thing that's known is the fact that the boys disappeared. All of the other evidence is only speculation. However, join us today as we look at the mystery of the princes in the tower and we look at who possibly was to blame. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. On the 9th of April 1483, Edward IV died after suffering from a short bout of illness and at the time Edward's son Edward was at Ludlow Castle. Richard the Duke of Gloucester, soon to become Richard III, was at Middleham Castle in Yorkshire when he heard of his brother's death and he went to York Minster to pledge loyalty to the new king, his nephew, Edward V. Before his death, Edward IV placed Richard in charge of his two sons' protection, becoming the Lord Protector. However, Edward V and Richard set out for London and met at Stony Stratford on the 29th of April. The next morning, Richard the Duke of Gloucester arrested all of Edward's chaperones and escorts, including their uncle Anthony Woodville, the second Earl Rivers, and also Sir Richard Grey, their half-brother. From here they were sent to Pontefract Castle, and then on the 25th of June were executed by beheading. Richard, the boy's uncle, then took possession of the prince himself, and Edward V and Richard arrived in London together. The plans for Edward's coronation were being made, however it was put back from the 4th of May 1483 to the 25th of June. Records show that on the 19th of May 1483, Edward V was staying at the Tower of London, in which was a tradition before a monarch's coronation. They would always stay inside the tower before being crowned the king. Around a month later, Edward was reunited inside the tower with his younger brother, Richard the Duke of York, however the coronation would then be postponed indefinitely. At St Paul's Cathedral, a sermon was preached outlining Richard the Duke of Gloucester, the boy's uncle, to be the only legitimate heir to the throne, and the boys were declared to be bastards. The claim was later declared and backed by Parliament, being confirmed in law in 1484 by Titulus Regius. On the 25th of June, Richard the Duke of Gloucester was approached by a number of knights and lords to take the throne, and on the 6th of July 1483, he was crowned King Richard III of England. Now whatever happened to the two boys who had just been declared illegitimate is much of a mystery. It's clear that they were inside the Tower of London in 1483 and one of the people who documents this is Dominic Mancini, an Italian friar who visited England at the time of the disappearance. He reported that Edward was regularly visited by a doctor and that he was like a victim prepared for sacrifice. Reports from this time also do document how the two princes were seen playing in the grounds of the tower, but there were no more recorded sightings of them after summer 1483. Rumours of their murder would spread to France and across the continent, however there wasn't too much written at the time documenting the two boys' movements. An attempt was even made to rescue them, however this failed, and today their fate remains a complete mystery over 500 years later. There are a number of suspects and theories to the case, and over time, some of these suspects have gained more notoriety than others. The first suspect is a man who is widely believed by historians to have been the person most responsible or the prime suspect for the prince's disappearance or murders. Richard III had a huge amount to gain from the boys vanishing, for he could become and did become the King of England. Richard even managed to eliminate the boys from the succession to the throne, but when he was crowned, he did face a huge amount of scrutiny and backlash for seizing the throne. From inside the House of York to which he belonged, many were angry and deemed him to be a usurper, a theory that spread across England and Europe. By late 1483, the rumours of the boy's death had been circulating across England, and Richard himself never even tried to attempt to show the boys to be alive 
by presenting them to the public. If he did this, then it would silence the dissenters that accused the boys of being murdered. However, the boys could have been used then as figureheads for a rebellion if they were alive. Richard also never commissioned an investigation into the prince's whereabouts, which is bizarre considering he was appointed the boys' protector and the person who was responsible for their well-being and safety. One of the doubts against Richard is the fact he was away from court on progression through the Yorkist territory when the princes did disappear. This means that if they died during this time, then he would have been unable to murder them himself, however this does not prevent him from ordering the deaths of the boys. The princes were under guard inside the Tower of London and were being kept secure by Richard's own soldiers and men, and access to the princes was extremely limited. No one who didn't have Richard's permission could not visit the boys, and it's very possible that he could have convinced one of his friends or guards to have committed the murder of the princes. It's extremely unlikely that Richard though would not have known about the fate of his nephews, and it's almost certain that he probably knew what happened to them. That takes us on to Sir James Tyrrell. Leading Tudor historians Thomas More who wrote during Henry VIII's reign and Polydor Virgil, Henry VII's historian, both proposed that Richard ordered the murders of the two princes. Both of these accounts named Sir James Tyrrell as the murderer, with Tyrrell himself being an English knight who was a prominent soldier within the Yorkist ranks. Tyrrell was arrested during the reign of Henry VII for supporting another Yorkist claim to the throne, and during his imprisonment and torture, it was said that he admitted to having murdered the princes after being ordered to do so by Richard III. Thomas More states that Tyrrell made his confession to the murders, and that he also implicated two other men, and despite further questioning, he was unable to say where the bodies were. He claimed that another accomplice moved the bodies. The problem with Tyrrell's testimony is the fact that only More writes of his confession, and no other official record has ever been found of his admission. It's clear that if you consider Tyrrell to be the murderer, then he was probably ordered to commit the crime by Richard III. The Bill of Attainder, brought forward by Henry VII, referred to Richard as the unnatural, mischievous and great perjuries, treasons, homicides and murders in the shedding of infant's blood with so many other wrongs, odious offences and abominations against God and men. The reference to the shedding of blood in this legislation may have been an accusation towards Richard of the prince's murders. Although it's mostly likely that Richard did have some role in the disappearance of the princes, as he had access and opportunity in the most to gain, there is an argument against. The fact that Richard and Parliament had already barred the boys from the throne and declared them illegitimate made them basically irrelevant, so Richard did not need to have his nephews murdered, as they had no way onto the throne. However, should they have lived, they could have been an important sign of rebellion against a new king, and more on this later. Another possible suspect who could have had involvement in the prince's disappearance was Henry VII or Henry Tudor. Following his seizure of the crown after the Battle of Bosworth Field, he executed some rivals to the throne. One of these is said to have been John of Gloucester, Richard III's illegitimate son. Henry's involvement must have been after he became king in 1485, as beforehand he was out of the country when the princes disappeared. A year after becoming king, Henry married the prince's elder sister, Elizabeth of York, to reinforce his claim to the throne, and also unite the House of Lancaster and the House of York. It has been said that Henry possibly had the princes executed by giving orders between the 16th of June and the 16th of July, 1486, as after this date, orders went out to circulate the story that Richard had killed the princes. So after this, the propaganda against Richard III became very popular, and also the prince's mother, Elizabeth Woodville, knew that this was false, so Henry would have to keep her quiet as well. This could have been the motivation behind the fact that Henry confiscated all of Elizabeth's lands and possessions and kept her in Bermondsey Abbey for six years before she died. Henry's involvement is highly debated, and he was never accused of the murder by any contemporary sources at the time, and even his enemies did not point the finger at Henry VII. There isn't much evidence that links him to the disappearance of the boys too, however they did belong to the rival house, and would have presented as a viable opponent to his reign should they have lived and been used as figureheads for a Yorkist rebellion. 
Ultimately, the boys were the sons of Edward IV and would have been the rightful heirs and would seriously have caused Henry Tudor some headaches. There is another suspect linked into Richard III who could possibly be linked to the disappearance of the princes in the tower. However, the involvement of Henry Stafford, the second Duke of Buckingham, a very close ally of Richard III, depends on the date of when the princes disappeared or were murdered. Henry Stafford was executed himself in November 1483. Buckingham had been very close with Richard III following his accession to the throne, and he even helped him, but he ended up joining with Henry Tudor and Margaret Beaufort in an unsuccessful rebellion. For this, Buckingham was then beheaded. As Richard's key ally, it's believed that he could have had a hand in organising and even murdering the two princes. He was a descendant of Edward III and possibly even may have hoped to take the throne himself. A document was discovered within the archives of the College of Arms in London in 1980 which implicated Buckingham, saying the murder be the vice of the Duke of Buckingham. This led to historians beginning to suggest that some of Richard III's most prominent supporters, for example Tyrrell and Buckingham, murdered the princes on their own instincts before waiting for Richard to tell them to. This could have been done as a way of getting favour from the new king, Richard III. Buckingham was so powerful at the time that when the king would depart London, he would basically leave it in the charge of Buckingham. He is the only person named as being responsible in any contemporary account other than Richard III. It's unlikely though that he would have acted alone. Firstly, if he was guilty of acting without being told to do so by Richard, then it is strange that Richard did not lay the blame of the prince's murder at Buckingham, once he had been executed and disgraced. This would have allowed Richard to clear his name. Also, as Richard was the Lord Protector, he would have needed Richard's help to gain physical access to the princes, as they were kept under close guard in the Tower of London so he needed some sort of collaboration with the king. He was the constable of England though, so he could possibly have automatically gained access without permission. In Shakespeare's play Richard III, Buckingham is allied with Richard in his scheming, until the fact he is ordered to kill the princes in the tower. One other possible idea is the fact that the princes in the tower escaped through some means or were exiled out of England to live in a different country. It's possible that the two princes could have been sent away and that Richard III and later Henry VII knew of their whereabouts. This would have helped Henry later on as he would have let people think that the boys would have been murdered and any possible pretender to the throne could have been deemed to be fake. This is what happened when Perkin Warbeck and Lambert Simnel claimed to be Richard the Duke of York. 18th century writer Horace Walpole argued that Richard the younger boy in the tower in fact escaped death and that Perkin Warbeck genuinely was Richard. This was later retracted, however some do believe that Warbeck was in fact Richard. If the two boys were hidden away, it did have a number of disadvantages to Richard III, especially at any point his nephews could have challenged his rule and would have been free to declare themselves the rightful heir. Chances are also that the House of York would listen to these claims, as Richard had made a number of enemies within the house when he became king. The issue with the idea of escape though, is the fact that there isn't any evidence that points to this theory at all. A final idea is also that the princes could have died from natural causes, either inside the tower or more probably if they escaped later on. It wasn't uncommon for younger children to die during this time, especially within the cold walls of the Tower of London although it's most probable that they were looked after well. However, Richard could possibly have made this harder for the boys in his role as Lord Protector. The princes in the tower has been a mystery that remains unsolved for over 500 years. In 1674, workmen who were helping to remodel the Tower of London dug up a wooden box containing two small human skeletons. The bones were found 10 feet under a staircase leading to the Chapel of the White Tower. Although they were not the first human skeletons found at the tower, they were attributed to have been the princes, due to the location described by Tudor writer and historian Thomas More. One report said that they were found with pieces of rag and velvet around them. Four years later after their discovery, the bones were placed in an urn and ordered by King Charles II to be interred in Westminster Abbey in the wall of the Henry VII Lady Chapel. In 1933, the bones were removed and examined by leading professionals, and by measuring the bones and teeth, 
the experts concluded that they belonged to two children, around the correct age for the two princes. The bones were found to have been thrown carelessly within animal bones as well. One of the skeletons was larger than the other, and many bones were missing, and some had been broken by the workmen. No attempt to determine whether the bones were male or female was ever made, and more importantly, no further scientific examination has ever been conducted on the bones, and DNA analysis has also never been attempted. In 1789, workmen who were also carrying out repair work in St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle accidentally broke into the vault of Edward IV and Queen Elizabeth Woodville. During this, they found a small adjoining vault, which was found to contain the coffins of two children. No inspection or examination was carried out, however the tomb was resealed. The tomb was inscribed with the names of two of Edward IV's children, George I Duke of Bedford, who died at the age of two, and Mary of York, who died at 14. The problem is that two of the lead coffins labelled George and Mary Plantagenet were found in the chapel. So there were four tombs for two children, so it's considered by some that possibly the vaults contained two more children's skeletons, and possibly those of the princes in the tower. The story of the prince in the tower still captivates the world today, with so many hypotheses circulating. However, my own opinion on the matter is that Richard III was definitely involved in some way to the disappearance of the two young boys. At the end of the day, he had so much to gain from the boys being taken out of the line of succession, and the fact he became king under so much mystery is definitely suspicious. Also, he had one of the key elements to the whole saga, access to the boys inside the Tower of London. After he was crowned king too, no one would have dared to outright dissent or accuse Richard, as they would technically be guilty of treason and could be executed. Richard himself during his short reign did behead treasonous individuals, so was unlikely to have spared any such dissenter. Whether he carried out the murder of his two nephews himself, or got another few people to do it, seems the most plausible explanation to me. However, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the topic, so please let me know in the comment box below with your opinion. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.